Welcome to the Business Greater Than You podcast, where we dive deep into the stories of men and women who have successfully transcended the frazzled solopreneur life and built productive teams with better lifestyle and income. I'm Nelson Bars, the founder and owner of Utah Independent Mortgage Corp. And I'm Liz Sears, founder and co-owner of My Utah Agents. We're excited for you to listen, interact, and grow with us. So please share your comments below and let's get started. Okay, Kay, well, I am super excited for today's episode. I have one of my favorite people in the whole world on here. Aww. Not just saying that, it's really true. <laughs> hey, two of my favorite people. Back off. <laughs> no, just kidding. So Shannon has started multiple businesses, and one of those is the business that we have. So my Utah agents, we uh, teamed up a little over, it was two and a half years ago we teamed up, and two yeah. years ago that uh, we had our anniversary anniversary or two years ago that we started our brokerage yeah and just barely had our anniversary so the one business that we wanted to talk about because it has a different learning curve that I wasn't as much of a part of but I did get to witness it from the outside (laughs) is my Utah stagers yes so would love to have you share with us a little bit about where what that business looks like today cool Well, today we have come far since our beginnings in 2018, which it was just honestly like a little side hobby project to um, essentially kind of help piggyback with a friend. She wanted to become a stager and I reached out to my own stager that I had um, used previously and she goes, oh my gosh, well, I'm actually sorry to tell you, but I'm selling my staging company. Mm -hmm. Um, And so with that, I was like, well, Maybe. I have a friend who wants to be a stager. How much are you willing to sell your product for? She always did a phenomenal job, and this is before staging was even really known. Like yep. it was, right? you know. And she told me a price which was super affordable, and I was like, well, maybe I can team up with this friend. And so with that being said, bought it sight unseen, meaning didn't even see what we were buying. I just knew she said she had three homes worth of inventory. Yeah. And a... Uh, Um, trailer to haul it all and she was about to have more babies and her husband was sick of helping her haul it because it was her (laughs) passion not his right yeah and so any ever since coming from that now we are actually we just moved into our very first warehouse which was a pretty big deal Mm -hmm. and it was on our docket for like a year to try to find the perfect space oh my gosh this space is amazing yeah okay hold on i need to pause because we got to clarify a couple things okay what is a staging company? I think. Okay, <laughs> let's get to the basics. There might be some people I out there it. wondering, okay. like if you're yeah. driving horse-drawn yeah. carriages or yeah. if it's something else, <laughs> like a Wells Fargo stage coach. Yeah. 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 Yes. No. Um, so essentially, what we do is our job is to showcase homes that are going to hit the open market. So with that being said, like one of our taglines is, "You wouldn't show up to a job interview naked." Hmm. So <laughs> if I don't home, know, yeah, depends on the job. <laughs> True. Um, so with that being said, you wouldn't show a home, like you shouldn't show a home that's vacant, right? Like yeah. it doesn't have a personality really behind it. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like it could have a great location, a great layout. Mm-hmm. It could have some amazing finishes, but really to showcase it in its best spotlight, you want to add on, you know, all the extra charm. Um, show the space and you know give them a sense for the size of it also be able to downplay any negatives that Mm -hmm. may potentially be in the home Mm -hmm. Um, give it a personality and put a bow on top yeah so it's kind of like interior design yes and marketing for a home oh yeah and you're yeah so with that being said most homes are found online right Mm -hmm. how many times have you gone online and seen a home that's vacant versus one that was decorated I don't really see very well. many vacant ones anymore. I think people are smart, right? Because yeah. it's ugly. Yeah. It's hard I know. to fall in love with an yeah. empty house. And you could be like, oh, that kitchen's cute, or oh, yeah. I love the countertops, or oh, I like the cabinets. Yeah. But mm-hmm. when you see it for what it can be, mm-hmm. and they actually say only 10% of people are visual. So, yeah. say for example, when you're showcasing it online, you're capturing them. And some people will do virtual staging, which is great because your pictures online look amazing. But now when they're showing up in person, they're like, wait. Uh-huh. What is this? It's like, <laughs> yeah, they're almost like trying to pull up the pictures to say, now yeah. where did where did they put the couch again? Like, what? Did oh this my gosh, that's like? like one of the common things we hear. So, how do you put the couch? Where do you put the table? Yeah, you know, different things. Yeah. So this was a complimentary business. You were already a realtor, mm-hmm. and this was 
an opportunity you saw to add to what you do or yeah. complimentary to what you And kind of give an opportunity to a friend that, you yeah. know, wanted to do it. And I knew the value of it and I have a need for it. So I was mm-hmm. like, perfect. It's yeah. a win-win. And so she had three homes worth of inventory. You mean enough furniture and stuff to do three at a time. Yeah. Three houses at yep. a time. Got yep. It. Um, we show up to buy all of the stuff and that's when we ended up <laughs> realizing we probably weren't going to keep oh, no. half of it. Oh, and we worked with what we got (laughs) for a while (laughs) Mm -hmm. and she would tell us how she would hide, you know, different things. So that's, what's really cool is people in this space are very creative Mm -hmm. and right. They know what Mm -hmm. to work with, what they got. And sometimes it's your own product and sometimes it's the house Mm -hmm. is the product. And so really being able to have that eye and get creative and make the best out of the situation, which is exactly what we did. Okay. Um, And so, yeah, so now we've grown a ton since then. We probably have, now that we've moved out of warehouses, um, sorry, not warehouses, but uh, storage units, we had four of them Mm -hmm. because we kept growing. Mm -hmm. And then it's great when it's all out in the homes, but then all of a sudden that it needs its home of itself when it's Mm -hmm. not being used and you have the seasonality. And so we ended up having to get go from like two storage units to three. And it was nice because they coincidentally landed all side by side. And then all of a sudden we grew a ton and then all that fur- furniture had to come back. And so we needed a fourth one and a big one at that, mm-hmm. which was in a different location. Okay. So now you're juggling furniture. Yeah. You're trying to find where it's all at. It's cold in the winter time. It's rainy. It's, uh-huh. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like Sounds it was a, like nightmare. a nightmare. Yeah. It was a nightmare. So how many, how many homes worth of inventory do you have now? So now that we pulled it out, we thought we had about 12 homes Uh worth. Um, we're probably closer to 20. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Her warehouse. It was so fun. You get there and the warehouse has like this reception area with the cutest desk. I don't know where you found that. And then, I didn't find it. Let's be real, Nicole. <laughs> she asked for the approval, though. She's yeah. like, can I get this? I'm like, yes. I love it. And so they have a window that has their name on it and everything. You go in and you feel like you just entered a home decor store, mm-hmm. like furniture and everything. Wow. So yeah. there's giant, you know, racks yeah. and everything. Yep. Bryce built everything. out shelves. We have, you know, the metal shelves in between. We have it all aisles. organized. There's yeah, aisles. the aisles. <laughs> wow. um, it's all organized. Everything's now tagged. We're using what's called Stage Force, which essentially is our own like online shopping. Oh. That mm-hmm. the stylists now, because now we have multiple stylists, and not all of them are close mm. in proximity to our warehouse. Because we stage all across Utah, um, from Utah County, they know what inventory to pick from. Yeah, yeah. or what's available, and so essentially mm-hmm. they can kind of sh- shop online and see what's the on the shelves mm-hmm. okay. and then our manager nicole wow. can pull all the pieces for the hollow haulers to load up and they take it to the home oh my goodness it's just it's amazing that yeah. is awesome yeah okay so i just i'm interesting because there's a contrast here the the woman who sold it to you yeah she was doing it all by herself making mm-hmm. her husband haul everything which happens around, a lot here right? in utah sure mm-hmm. yeah and this is what our podcast is about is about the transition from that the yeah, frazzled, mom and pod, like solo, like small. solopreneur yeah. life, which is yeah. no fun for anybody, yeah, including yeah. your customers, mm-hmm. right? To this team, like you have now, yeah. So, so can you talk to us about that transition and how it started for you? <laughs> and yeah, take us back to the beginning. It's and- crazy because it's almost like a rebirth, and you know, with that, there's a death of like a your past chapter, and then it's like okay, here we go again. And it's another growth mode. So, mm-hmm. um, when I bought it with, um, the initial friend of mine, she had just had a, her second son who was really young and we were averaging cause right. We only had three homes to work with. So it's not like it was a super serious, like full-time mm-hmm. thing. Um, with that being said, we were doing about two homes a month. Mm-hmm. That's decent when you have three homes mm-hmm. of product, you know. Um, and again, some months we did one and some months we did zero. And then we do two again and all of that. Um, 
she ended up realizing that it and her husband helped her haul and right it's you're yeah. hauling for I was gonna you're say, like who's moving, moving all the furniture <laughs> who's moving all the furniture for fun yeah for <laughs> you know your passion because the wife loves it <laughs> the woman typically does because yeah. they're like oh i get to move stuff around and make this place pretty you know yeah it looks from the outside <laughs> like it'd be super glamorous and fun but really it's sweaty hard work of it carrying in so, tables and couches yeah. and chairs yeah. and you're kind of glamorized stuff. movers yeah. mm-hmm. like <laughs> really <laughs> Yeah. You know, and what's funny is I've even told like some of our stylists along the way, like, let's do a video and let's do a thing. And they're like, Shannon, I am sweaty at the end of this. Like, <laughs> I don't want to be showcasing this anywhere, you know? And so with that being said, Holly ended up realizing and her husband realized, you know, it's really not worth it. We weren't charging a lot because we kind of took her pricing and mm-hmm. said, all right, that's kind of what we have to work with because we didn't know otherwise either. So right. a lot of people think, oh my gosh, it, you know, it costs this much a lot of it comes in you're buying more inventory you're paying for gas and wear and tear on that truck Mm -hmm. we had to buy a new trailer because that trailer was so big and like you know expensive to haul and getting older and so you have all of these costs and inconvenience some neighborhoods i bet it was difficult oh yeah maneuver it yeah so with that being said we didn't have a lot to really work with so we didn't have a lot to work with to really compensate them to really make it Mm -hmm. worth it So then we transition into um, another gal. So Holly um, is my first uh, business partner in it. Then we transition over to Brandy, who is essentially like a saving grace. Mm -hmm. She came in and she rocked it. She does hair full time. Hmm. So she was doing it on the side essentially Mm -hmm. and then we actually brought in sandy so it's kind of fun because it was the brandy and sandy show (laughs) and they both have the last name stevens but one's (laughs) with a v one's with a ph just to keep it easy just to keep it easy (laughs) (laughs) but it was kind of fun um and so they did great we were averaging Mm -hmm. um like three or four homes we were buying more furniture um to obviously we were picking up demand but i mean brandy can't really do her best job when she's working another full-time job and sandy had a full-time job mm-hmm. so all of these people kind of have full who's moving the furniture brandy and sandy picking up their couches husbands, their again. husbands yeah. yeah yeah and then we ended Sounds up realizing delightful. oh my gosh we are wearing these husbands out yeah. we need to look at maybe paying for a hauler mm-hmm. so as we've kind of holla. gone through this holla. <laughs> holla. holla at you girl as we've gone through this transition phase, we ended up realizing we really need to segregate the pieces. You know, it can't always be like this husband and wife team. Um, and the reason being is there can be some great stylists that their husbands don't want to haul or mm-hmm. are available to haul mm-hmm. or even have a truck to haul. So now we need people that can do that piece so then we can have more stylists and different people. I think people. It's, that word stylist is cool. Did you just come up with that? Yeah, or is we that- did. Because I would. They're yeah. styling yeah. the house. When well, it's hairstylist anyway. Right? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Hilarious. that's awesome. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. And then um, Brandy knew that we could, we had a lot more potential there and she couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. So then um, one of our stylists at that time. So it's kind of fun because as a stylist comes on, they kind of all of a sudden move up. It's kind of like in women's council, they're voluntold yeah. of like, hey, we need your help. Are you willing <laughs> to take this position? <laughs> I love that. But it all happened naturally, and all of them, like, we've really grown during each one of those, which was valuable, right? And so now we have Nicole, who is our manager right now. And it's, she's your full-time employee. She is our very first full-time employee. So this is kind of cool. This is a different kind of business than any that we've interviewed so far, because a lot of them, it was full-time for the owner, mm-hmm. and then full-time for each of the employees that they hired. Mm-hmm. But this is completely different, where it, it was is everybody's as yeah. part-time job. Yeah. Everyone's PRN. Part, your part-time yeah. job, their part PRN is probably better than part-time because it's not even a guaranteed 12 hours a week. It's no. as what needed. What is PRN? PRN is a medical term for as needed. Yeah. Oh. So yeah. when there's I extra thought it was like a workload. title, like PRN. <laughs> it's PRN. like a professional RN or something. <laughs> there, that could work too. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. So when I hired um, Nicole, really Brandy set it up and we mm-hmm. knew it was going to be a full-time position. And I actually had already been talking to Brandy about Nice. her quitting hair so she can do it full time but that's a passion of hers that she loves and she's already got a good foundation underneath her so yep. i've already been kind of pressuring her of like hey we really need this it's already your job like mm-hmm. are you willing to kind of take the leap and what's awesome is nobody's ever left me hanging mm. everybody when they said hey yep. this business has kind of outgrown me and where i'm at in my life and what i can give it because mm-hmm. again it's always been a side thing they've always 
thankfully have said, but here's who I feel like oh. has been the perfect fit. And so really Nicole was working in title. Mm -hmm. She was a title assistant. And so she, and she was phenomenal at what she does, like one of our very best stylists. And so when she said she was willing to quit her job to take this on, mm -hmm. I was really excited and yet really nervous because now all of a sudden I'm paying a full-time salary. salary. Yeah. Which yep. even still to this day, I cover myself, but it's very, it, to me, it's a startup expense. That's a yep. scary moment. I mean, I'm sure this is the transition that we talk about a lot is yep. going from even virtual assistants or part-timers mm -hmm. or just, you know, doing, making your wife do stuff or your <laughs> spouse, all of a sudden you're taking on a salary, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the stress that you felt at that time? Were you nervous or did you already have enough revenue and client base that it was well let's time. just say this happened last year in okay. 2021 okay and during covid during well yeah but that it didn't impact us on the real estate side okay and so what's awesome is i'm also a very heavy listing agent so mm -hmm. i was able to feed a lot of business anyways into mm -hmm. the company and yeah. offer that as a unique value proposition which on my own deals um, sometimes I'll do 50, 50, sometimes depending on the price or the client or whatever, sometimes I'll cover it all. So to me, it's almost like an added bonus mm -hmm. and I'm essentially getting a higher price out of the home now. Yeah. And the appraisals literally all came back at value. Wow. Never had an issue of any home I've hmm. ever staged, which is super awesome. That's lame. And so I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of compensating for it in <clears throat> my commissions, which then is covering yeah. the salaries. Yeah. And so to me, it's like a win, win. It's a, like one's kind of essentially feeding the other and they both benefit. Mm -hmm. Um, was it scary? Yes. Because that salary is due no matter what. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but last year we had a record breaking year as a company. Um, you know, I did one of my best years in the past few years, um, on the, within my Utah agents that helps pay for that. So, Great. and Liz knows this to be true. I thrive under pressure. Mm -hmm. I thrive with that. You're fire. not afraid to take some risk. No, and... I, if you are, I wouldn't be an entrepreneur, Yeah. you know? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I get nervous every time I hire somebody, like <laughs> it almost feels like you're just one step higher on a tree and the limbs are getting smaller and smaller and you almost feel like you've outgrown your stability. Mm -hmm. It's it's every hire gives me anxiety and I have to like recognize the fear of self-sabotaging myself mm -hmm. and backing up mm -hmm. and just face it and step into it. We've hired lots of people, right? And I think part of the fear for me was that it wasn't going to work out. I wanted mm -hmm. to hire the perfect person. I wanted it to work. I didn't want to fail at that. Yeah. And now that I've felt that enough times, it's like, well, I'm going to well, knock on wood. Process. Happens enough. I'm going to knock on wood. I felt mm. that in our um, real estate company, mm -hmm. absolutely for sure. Um, I feel like in the staging company, I've lucked out on who it is that they've kind of transitioned and mm -hmm. rolled into. It just happened really naturally that every single one was the perfect, you know, next yeah. step. Mm -hmm. um, with that being said, though, I would have to say I will agree with you that when, and I know at the end of the day when I'm paying somebody that salary, it's essentially so I don't have to do it myself and I don't mm -hmm. have the time to do it myself. Yeah, that's a great So thing. that's worth it for me is to buy back my time and the balance that I have to where I can feasibly run both businesses mm -hmm. at the same time and still have a great home life and still go on vacation and do the other things that are important to me with like my friends and you know what I mean, my family. So I knew if I didn't do that, it would fall back on me. Mm, and right. then all of this would be for no, yeah, it's not a no very attractive good reason, choice. right? Like yeah. the whole quote, you didn't come this far just to come this far. Yeah. Right. And you have three currencies to work with. You know, like we've talked about before, you've got your money, you've got your time, and you've got your skill set. Mm -hmm. And when you're lacking one, you'll usually spend the other two to get it. Yep. Mm. And so you spending your money to get back your time <laughs> yeah. and then using your skill set that you've already got and bringing yep. on people with the skill set to help compensate those. Yeah, That's because let's possible. be real. I am not the designer behind the scenes. Like these girls are phenomenal. They are way better than I am. Mm -hmm. Like I pay them to come into my house oh, wow. to dress yep. up my thing. So, and I have like, I have a big vision, but I'm more on the business end and I'm very like, you know, I have my one way. They can see 10 different ways on how this house can be laid out and styled. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm like, you guys are amazing. I, yeah. Yep. So. And it seems like, and maybe you'll tell us more of the story, but maybe 
part of the reason that there wasn't as much anxiety on that business is because it was a it was like a side mm-hmm. stream. It was mm-hmm. a secondary stream for you, and it was yeah. naturally growing organically. You weren't trying to push it and take huge risks. Mm-hmm. It was just happening yeah. as it went. Yeah. Right? Um, I think I was very focused, but intentional on the growth, mm-hmm. meaning like I never wanted to push ourselves too far too fast mm-hmm. because it was a side thing that I knew I wouldn't be able to handle mm-hmm. or be the one to really drive it forward. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's, it's been a very natural, like maintainable, sustainable growth pattern that's just yeah. kind of happened. Smart. So I want to ask you this because some of our listeners, watchers, I always forget that we have people on video too. Nobody's watching. Um, <laughs> nobody's watching. Okay, good. Uh, is that um, quite a few of them have their main job that they work, that they put their 40 hours a week into, mm-hmm. and then they have ideas of starting other businesses too. Yeah. And so how do you balance between them? How do you time block? Oh, yeah. I know that's part of it, yeah. but, but explain how you have the balance between your, your main job and this great lucrative side job mm-hmm. eventually. Yeah, yeah. eventually. <laughs> I'm like, trust me, I keep track of what, when the business, cause we're getting to that tipping point that I'm really starting to see this could eventually get back mm-hmm. to me, which will be really nice. In fact, there's two parts that I want to mention. So okay. you help me remember it if I forget is one, how you balance the time wise okay. and then two, what you do for your books. Okay. Because I know that's one piece that you really have a, a great approach to that sets you up for success that a lot My of people. Books? Yeah. Like your bookkeeping? financial bookkeeping. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How you okay. track I was your like, budget. Which how books you do. do you decorate I know. with? <laughs> do you put them backwards have on the you shelf? Your children's picture books. Because that's your other job. Yeah. Well, and we kidding. do read a lot of books, both you and I. So. <laughs> yep. Um, okay. So time blocking. I have faithfully every Friday to check in with my Utah stagers. So I check in with Nicole. Um, Normally, other than that, it was just as stuff kind of happened and came up, I've Mm -hmm. had always that person in charge that was always communicative to me. So as things happen throughout the week, they would reach out, they would, you know, get the guidance, ask the questions, like, you know, whatever it was, or they would just make, you know, the decision and tell me, hey, hopefully you're okay with this. This is what I did. So a certain so, amount of empowerment that you gave them to make decisions. And if it was above and beyond that, then they came to you mm-hmm. or, and kept you in the loop as they made decisions. Yeah. And I've had to give training and feedback, like, cause sometimes say if somebody's upset, the first thing you want to do is immediately like say, oh, we'll, we'll knock this off. And I'm like, we don't have a lot to give when it comes financially. <laughs> like, let's be real, you yeah. know? So really on the financial side, they would typically always refer that back to me. Like, Hey, we're maxed out. We have all these jobs out, but we have two more calls coming in and two people, are you okay? And so we would just kind of set a budget to say, okay, here's how much you can spend on each home. Mm -hmm. And then they would go shop online, which they love to shop. So that's (laughs) filling up their cup, you know, Mm -hmm. and now we're able to go do another job. Because my whole thing is I never wanted to tell somebody no, that we can't do their job because essentially now that's creating a relationship and a tie with somebody else. Yep. Especially like that's first and foremost, but even more, especially when it's a repeat client. Right. And you want to keep them loyal to you and you want them to yeah. always know that you're there for them. I, they call you, a, they yeah, can hire a core you. value is you can depend on us. Even yep. if we don't have the product, we will figure it out. We're going to make it work so you can depend on us. Love it. Um, and so with, yeah, with that being said, it's just intermittent communication throughout the week. And then, mm-hmm literally only about 15 to 20 minutes of kind of checking and behind the scenes on Friday. Cool. And then now that we are growing, cause I do feel like when I hired Nicole on as a full-time um, manager, I was like, Hey, this is a legitimate business now. This is <laughs> no longer a side thing. And then that's when we realized, okay, now we need an actual warehouse space, like a home, an office. Mm-hmm. We need to make this better for everybody. There was a lot of pain points at that point in time. And so we were like, you know, what's going to solve it? It's going to be getting a warehouse. So now that's my next big risk I have to put on the line is a lease agreement, Mm -hmm. um, having utilities that we've never paid for. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, And we've consistently even had to buy trailers and yeah, yeah, the insurance and building all the shelves, which right now lumber is really expensive, you know, and the metal ones were even more expensive. So Anyways, with all of that being said, um, 
now that we are even still in the growth phase, I have now done more leadership training with Nicole because she's never been in a manager position. Yes. Yeah, so how did that transition happen? Because yeah. I know the first time you put people in leadership positions, they're not perfect. Yeah. No. <laughs> and even worse, still Weird, not. Right? <laughs> um, so anyways, she, she would tell me what she was kind of facing and mm -hmm. I would give her feedback on how to approach it. And then obviously when she came up for our team retreat, she yeah. was learning more about just like that abundant mindset, mm -hmm. you know, really feeling empowered, um, getting behind the reasons why people are who they are and kind of how best to approach it. So we've done that. We've also done a big um, kind of financial review because mm -hmm. to me, it's not good for me to keep all of that behind the scenes mm -hmm. with her as a manager. She needs to know what, how am I invested in this? What risk do we all have on the line? What do we need to do? Because it's very much a team. She's mm -hmm. a lot of the boots on the ground. I'm a lot of the financial backing, but we got to work well together for this business to play out to where, because it, it's our goal, just FYI, to be the number one staging company in Utah within awesome. about two years. That'd be amazing. So Sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we stopped you at Nicole. Okay. Talk more about after you hired her. How many people do you have now? Are they all like peace pay commission type of pay? Yeah. Or? So um, besides Nicole, everybody's paid per staging job. Okay. So we pay the haulers to essentially go drop off. Mm -hmm. um, and then we pay the stylist to style everything that was dropped off. And then we pay the haulers to go back and pick it up and bring it back. Um, so we have one manager who's Nicole. We have two haulers, mm -hmm. um, which we're needing more haulers because even for the haulers, it's a side job. Mm -hmm. And we have about five stylists right now. Um, and we have a stylist in Utah County. We have some in Davis County, Weber County. Um, and again, they'll, they'll go any from Cache Valley to Utah County. We did start charging a travel fee because obviously gas prices, like here they are almost yeah. reaching $5 per mile. And Depends for them, on when this episode yeah. goes out, it might be above five. We'll have to see. Yeah. Yeah. I know. We don't release these episodes as soon as we record them. So okay. <laughs> might be a while. I know yeah. I talked about our anniversary being last <clears throat> week and I'm like, mm, that might do this. A yeah. But I love, I love what you are doing. This is all so in my business, we ended up with just a ton of fixed costs, right? Mm -hmm. Salaries, mm -hmm. lease. You've got Nicole, you've got your warehouse. Those are fixed costs. Mm -hmm. But everything else, it seems, yeah. is a variable cost, yeah. right? You yeah. only pay it when you have revenue mm -hmm. to offset it, which is a brilliant yeah. business plan. I think our next level is yeah. hiring like a warehouse manager and probably a full-time hauler. Mm -hmm. Like somebody that can essentially work those two pieces. So Nicole can be the manager and also this you know more of a marketer and sales and get us more jobs do more right. marketing that sort of stuff where i was going to ask you who does your sales who's doing she it now does. she's doing all of it she does all of it she does all the scheduling uh -huh. does she go out and sell or is she just inbound kind of taking the demand uh, as more comes? inbound thankfully yeah. from me being in real mm -hmm. estate so long i have a lot of great relationships so you're doing with other sales. colleagues so yeah. essentially mm -hmm. i'm tagged all the time in private groups or people uh -huh. are reaching out to me directly and then I just refer them into Nicole. Awesome. Yep. Um, Very cool. Yeah. And then we just became an affiliate for the Women's Council of Realtors because honestly, uh -huh. I wouldn't probably have this job and this sort of confidence to take on two businesses without Women's Council mm. having brought me up as a leader in the industry. Very so cool. yeah. I want to get back to that organization and support the way I can. And hopefully we can build and nurture even more relationships that it'll be a win-win back yeah, again. Yep. Yeah. So you're deciding, I want to get back to the, the, the accounting and the fixed costs, the variable yeah, costs. Yeah, because you have books on here. We I have wrote books. It down. Wrote it down. But the okay. variable costs, you're talking about changing some of those to fixed costs, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What's the reasoning? You mentioned for Nicole's sake, for her to be able to do more sales. Mm -hmm. Is there a financial benefit for you to switch them to fixed? Nope. Is it going to cost you more? It'll probably cost me more, but how I see this all is as startup costs. Mm -hmm. Even though we started off in 2018 and now it's 2022, mm -hmm. even in, right, the days are long and the years are short, yep. we've grown substantially yeah. in that amount of time. And again, I feel like the whole, um, balancing act as far as like, you know, the scales are starting to tip mm -hmm. more in our favor. And I do feel like that's going to be our next best hire 
for the company to really grow to the yeah, next level awesome. that it's very capable of doing. Yeah, that And that's awesome. an interesting thing too with the um, watching the way the industries trend. Mm-hmm. And so like you had mentioned before, when you got into the staging in 2018, it was kind of a newer concept. There yeah. were a lot of realtors who did not see the value in it. Even I was brand new. I had just my first couple of listings that I had done staging for. Mm -hmm. And the reason that I chose to even look into it to begin with is I had a unique layout. You walked in and there was literally a dining space, kind of a walk out to the deck, living room space that had no separation at Mm -hmm. all. So people would walk in and be like, what do you do with this giant space? I don't get it. Mm -hmm. And the only way that we could get people to see the vision of this kind of higher end home was to stage it. And so that's what we did. And after that, I was like, oh my gosh. So I've become a proponent for it. And is that the right word? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Advocate. Advocate. (laughs) So then as, um, as watching that industry become um, getting more of a foothold inside of real estate, mm-hmm. that is another thing to watch for. Yeah. Whereas if getting into print advertising right now would probably not be a good idea considering yeah. where print advertising yeah. has been going in comparison yeah. to, you know, just imagine too, I mean, you're in a, you're in a very hot seller's market yeah. right now. Mm-hmm. Imagine the value when that switches and it's a buyer's Amen. market and sellers have to yeah. compete yes. for really buyers. Compete. I know. Right? And I've even had people say that, well, what's the value if the home's going to yeah, what's the itself. point right now? I just put them sign up and we're going to have 10 offers. You know, so and we're like, your... we're like, instead of five offers, you might get 10 offers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you know, with that being said, the more offers you have and the more they know more offers are on the table, the higher and the, mm-hmm. you know, the Annie's going to get to yeah. where then the price is. So then, um, we do have a package that you can just do it essentially for one week where essentially it's like, you know, it's a cheaper package, more affordable, but then that way you get your photography, you host your open house. It looks all good. You get an offer, then you can take it out. That's smart. But what's even smarter is when you pay for the one that's going to leave it in Mm -hmm. essentially three weeks to four weeks for the appraisal, because that's what we do on our own listings is we want to leave it in because that's who essentially has the final say of the value of the home. Mm -hmm. And trust me, it makes a difference even for them, even though it's not real property, it's still how you're showcasing that property Mm -hmm. compared to somebody else who didn't even clean up their house because now they're under contract, right? Some sellers just kind of let their houses go or Mm -hmm. a vacant home sitting there. Which one do you think they're gonna lean more towards as far as like, oh, I can see why somebody wanted to pay this price for this home and stamp of approval on it. I love how your unique value proposition includes all of the clients, all of the customers in the situation. So you have your um, listing agent, you know, your realtor, you have your seller, you have the potential buyer and then the appraiser and how your product hits all of those. And so taking advantage of that with how you market your company. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, and then I would also have to say too, when it does start shifting, right. Into more of a buyer's market, Mm -hmm. who knows when that's going to happen. Never. (laughs) Not Um, for a while still. Not for a while. But with that being said, we know, right. I remember back during, you know, 2011, 12, 13, if somebody were to put in a, like have a home that showcase compared to the 30 other homes that Mm -hmm. I went and toured. I mean, it was hard back then to even find something like decent. So I already know right now we have limited inventory and we're already doing the most amount of uh, staged homes we've ever done, which is 115 last year. Mm -hmm. And now we're gonna probably double that this year, even with the limited inventory in a seller's market. I Mm -hmm. can only assume that when things start shifting, more and more people are gonna see that value to say, Instead of reducing at 5,000 below the competition, I'm gonna spend X amount towards staging and also showcase it before it sits on the market too long and now I have to reduce it 10, 15, 20,000, yeah. you know? Not yep. saying that's gonna happen, that's pretty dramatic, but it did, it used to happen. Yep. It could, so. I think you're poised. I think you guys are so poised for whenever that happens. If you're growing this much now, yeah. in such a hard seller's market, I can't imagine how it's gonna blow up when it switches. Yeah. It's and we've had people that have used us that then they went to like a mom pa shop mm-hmm. because they were more affordable. They were cheaper because now we're like, Hey, we can't lose money on this. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not making much of anything. Um, but with that being said, those people really only last in the industry, maybe one or two years, their competition. And then all of a sudden they realize again, they burn out, they burn out. Yep. Husbands are sick of hauling. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, inventory gets old. Now you have to replace it. And you really didn't make any money on the inventory that you had at that. And now you got to sell it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. So I'm, I'm impressed too, that 
because this has been a side thing mm-hmm. for you, you never were able to get so in the weeds that it was hard to extricate yourself, mm-hmm. right? It's like almost you began and still are extricated. Start. You, you <laughs> yeah. were never intricated. <laughs> That's a big word. word. You were out. <laughs> But I think so many people, they start a business. Are you saying I'm excommunicated? No. Well, <laughs> we could rain. No. I'm saying so many people start a business. This is this is a flaw I have. It's like mm-hmm. I do it all myself, 100%, and then I'm going to bring in a person to take off a piece, Yeah. to take off a chunk. Yep. And every chunk is hard for me to let go of. It's hard to trust. And I think they feel inferior. Mm-hmm. And you did the reverse of that with this business. And literally yeah. it was just by luck. So I think it's good because normally I am controlling. Mm-hmm. Nor- normally I am what? like, no, you control. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's true though, right? If yeah. I know I can do it and I know I can do it well and I can do it better than most, mm-hmm. I'm going to do it. And faster. I mean, a lot yeah. of times since we have the vision in our head of what we yep. want it to look like, mm-hmm. executing it yeah. quickly, exactly right is easy. Yeah. To, to be honest, over all of these years, even when we were in a pickle and I ended up having a stage, Bryce even had to haul. Yeah. I probably can only remember about four, maybe five homes in four years that I've ever actually had to do myself. That's impressive. So to me, it was never my responsibility, but am I too good to get in the arena and, mm-hmm. and do it if need be? Absolutely not. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Very cool. So. Very cool. It's all about just keeping the priorities of number one option is find somewhere, someone else to do it. Yeah. Number two option is, option is try harder. Yeah. <laughs> number three is do it yourself. <laughs> and honestly, again, I know there's other people that can do better than me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, don't get me wrong. My house is cute. I have good stuff, you know, like, and our product makes it kind of easy. And even two out of those, like, four or five that I've done were new construction and they turned out amazing. But holy crap, like rearranging the mantle and the decorations even on the mantle above the fireplace seriously for like 20 30 minutes mm-hmm. i'm like i am so overthinking yeah. this it's like me with graphic design like, <laughs> yeah. i can do this and then five hours later i'm, I'm like, like never why mind. am i doing yeah. this hire someone so i'm like you know they can go into a house the stylist can in about an hour hour and a half and be completely done with a whole home you yeah. know and here i am taking 20 to 30 minutes yeah. on a mantle yeah. so, <laughs> not not my best use of time yeah well, yeah that's great yeah how do you find these stylists Um, well, normally, so the, the first one was a friend, right? Uh And then, um, Brandy, I can't remember how we got Brandy. I think she, she, I think she saw my stuff on social media, actually, if I go back and remember correctly. And then Sandy started seeing our stuff and Sandy, I used to play Bunko with way back in the day, like literally hadn't seen her in like eight years and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden she's like oh, i love decorating i'd love to do it and brandy was busy and liked to share the mm-hmm. the workload so she's like do you have a hauler and she's like yeah my husband will haul and so it kind of was like the dynamic duo there and then i think people just naturally saw it and started reaching out to us i have other realtors that have mm-hmm. reached out and wanted to work for us other just stay-at-home moms that like to do it and some of them don't have haulers and so that's why we're like hey how can we bring that talent in Mm -hmm. and still make this happen even though they don't have a husband that wants to haul and I don't blame them, (laughs) you know? So yeah. That's cool. The word naturally comes up again, right? They just kind of have come naturally. The growth has all been natural, Mm -hmm. which is always the strongest, longest lasting kind of growth, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, are we ready for our fire round or do you have more no, questions we for Shannon? About the books. Oh, the books. The books. The books. The books. Yeah. So how Is there do you, a trick? So um, running a business, there's a ton of entrepreneurs, solopreneurs mm-hmm. who the doing their books, their bookkeeping, knowing mm-hmm. their budget, their money is scary to them. And so they just avoid it. And I love, I love numbers. Right. And okay. I love um, spreadsheets. So. Okay. So share so, how you do them. And we are transitioning. Now we actually have an outside bookkeeper. Mm-hmm. SBS is doing now this year starting to streamline do. bookkeeping services. They're amazing. Yes, they are really yeah. amazing. So I am. Um, so Holly was tracking it and I would mm-hmm. just review it mm-hmm. essentially. And I like to break out what's our labor costs. Mm-hmm. Um, how much, so then we know what's our net on that actual staging job, right? So like how much did they pay? Mm-hmm. How much is our hard labor costs that immediately go back out? Cause we pay them like on the spot. Right. Yep. And then how much does the business have to retain? And then I would just keep track of like our seasonality and where the business came from. Was this mm-hmm. a past client? Is this a, you know, a referral? What County was it in? Because yep. now I'm trying to figure out where our demand is. So I know, okay, do we need to hire somebody more local to that area? Yep. So that was working out. 
Brandy was doing the books thereafter. Um, Nicole did it for literally just an interim. And now I'm like, do you know what? We just need to take that off the manager's plate and we just need to do um, an official streamlined business solution that they do our bookkeeping now. And we're gonna do monthly reviews because I know how much that helps you and I. Yes. And just kind of, you have to inspect what you expect. And I know how much money I've invested in this company and I know the growth we're about to have. I want that completely off of our plate, but also mm-hmm. us to still have an eye on it. Awesome. So, so. any other questions? Do you wish that? you had done that sooner? Hired I don't a feel like it was needed because mm-hmm. they're more expensive yeah. mm-hmm. than um, what I was paying. Um, I even had Holly come back on and do Mm -hmm. some of that just because I trust her, Mm -hmm. you know, with my finances. She'd log into our, you know, bank account and Venmo and all these different places and compile it all. She used to do it for a contracting company, so she's got Mm -hmm. the experience. And she just kind of showed me a little snapshot of where we're at. Um, So did you always do Excel or spreadsheets um, previous? Sheets. Mm -hmm. Just sheets. Nice. Google Sheets. Just keeping track. Just keeping track. All the different tabs. No. Wow. No, no QuickBooks. Basic. Basic. Keep it simple. Yeah. All right. Okay. Anything else you want to share with anybody about transitioning from a solo to, well, you never really were a solo. You were like a business purchaser creating. Yeah. (laughs) I know. This one's a little different. I love it. I love it. I love it as a really good case. This is it. I always value teamwork, hence why we're partners. Yeah. You know, like I just... If you find the right people and you align well and you have the same vision for the future, why mm-hmm. make it hard on yourself? Do right. it together. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So now. The rapid fire round. <laughs> One okay. minute. Okay. Four or five questions. Quick answers. We ask these questions to everybody okay. on the podcast. All right. Here we go. Rapid fire. Okay. What is your favorite podcast? It is Becoming Relentless by Ed Milet. He is so good. I love his. All right. What's your favorite business book? I have two of them. Essentialism and Blue Fishing. Essentialism. I haven't even read Blue Fishing. Sorry. I shouldn't get sidetracked. Okay. Okay. How many hours a day do you work? Ten. How many do you want to work? Um, Seven with one hour of thinking time. I thought you said four. No. I really would. (laughs) I would go stir crazy. I would probably go stir crazy Seven with one hour of thinking time. I would feel like like very unproductive. Yeah. I'm a little addicted to work. That's awesome. Who do you really look up to in the business world as a role model and why? Ooh, this one's a hard one because I have a lot of people. Yeah. So you're going to be one of them. (gasps) I'm going to say Spring Spring Benson. I'm going to say Nudia Mm -hmm. Rivera. and We had Nudia on our podcast. Oh, she's She's amazing. She is amazing. Um, And outside of that, I wouldn't say I have any others. It's all people I personally know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. I love it. Cool. All right, and what's the one best piece of advice that you could give our audience? Ask questions early on Mm -hmm. and ask for help. I love it. Yeah. Brilliant. All right, so if people want to get in touch with you, where's the best place to go? You can reach out to Nicole at my Utah Stagers, 385-205-9560, or follow us on Instagram and Facebook, my Utah Stagers. Well, that's very pertinent. Yeah. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Shannon. Thank you for your time. Thank you. That's great. I know. Thank you. You've been listening to the Business Greater Than You podcast with Nelson Bars and Liz Sears. Our mission is to help lenders and agents like you. If you're either already a full-time realtor or looking to become one and you desire to be highly successful, if you are both a learner and a doer, a hard worker and a total team player, we would love to chat with you about joining our team. Visit us at businessgreaterthanyou.com. If you're a loan officer or would like to be one, we have a path to help you learn the business and develop the skills needed to lead a high performance origination team for better income and lifestyle. And lastly, if you would like to work with either of us, we would love your business. Do you have a question for a future show? Would you like to be considered as a guest on our show? If so, please call or text our listener line at 801-871-9130.